Uh, let's start the conversation there. No mention in the president's statement about the brutality. Now, the president clearly is trying to defend his policy of reestablishing diplomatic relations, but no mention at all of the brutal history of Fidel Castro. Why? It's stunning. I mean, he, 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 everyone at the White House on this looks at the polling that says that a majority of Americans want to end the embargo, so they, they, they run with that. Uh, but I got emails yesterday from, from Cuban Americans I know or work with, and, and the stories of, 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 of genuine brutality and horror that, that Castro put, put that island through and put the families that ended up in Florida and New Jersey and elsewhere through uh, deserve mention by the president, frankly. There's an, inf they, you know, there's an inference there. Absolutely. History will judge and all that. Yeah, but, but, but Which is actually kind of a take on history will absolve me, which is what Castro was used to say. And this was kind of a play on that. A lot of people saw it that way. But it's an incredible dismissal of reality. Uh, that a lot of people down there uh, in Florida especially uh, have, have always thought. And they've been very dismissive of that feeling, saying, look, a majority of the country wants this. There's, there's economic benefit. If we engage them, this will work. But I thought that was a real missed opportunity by the president. There's also something else at play here, which is we've seen in a number of areas with the White House. You know, President Obama knows that Trump is coming to office. He knows that Donald Trump and the Republican Congress is likely to try to overturn most of what he did as president. So he's really trying to not give them any room to do that. We've seen that with the Iran deal. Uh, we've seen that in other areas, you know, uh, uh, commuting sentences. They're trying to make it as hard as possible uh, for them to roll back uh, what he's done. Yeah, and, and it's also and Obama's, right. you know, sort of professorial personality, right? He's right. cool, uh, and a lot of people have criticized him for that. And I think uh, the comparison... A lot of people say it's one of the reasons we have Trump. Exactly. It's a exactly. reaction. Who runs hot, yeah, right? right? I mean, basically, I mean, his, his, his Twitter there, four words. I mean, it was like, I mean, sort of like the, what the munchkins would have tweeted uh, if they had Twitter back in the day about the Wicked Witch <laughs> of the East. I mean, that's essentially what it was. But it, I mean, it was all passion and emotion and feeling. Uh, and then his longer statement calling him a br brutal dictator. Still an open question as to what happens with these policies, right? Uh, because he seemed to suggest there would still be some sort of openness, kind of a wait and see in terms of uh, those policies that Obama uh, has has ordered through, exec through executive action. On a, yeah. on a slow yeah. week, on a slow week, we are doing a show on what would they have tweeted from Oz. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, even though Trump called him a brutal dictator and criticized uh, Castro the way that Obama did not, they did both sort of acknowledge that this is sort of a turning point yeah. right. in the Cuban rela and American relationship. And that's a question, of course, for Donald Trump. He could come in, as he promised to do in September in a speech in Florida, and reverse a lot of the president's policies because they were done on an executive level. Right. But the question is, the overall trade embargo, which needs congressional mm -hmm. approval, right. does Congress move forward on that? That's a much harder... And, and, it gets, and it gets back to the defining question we face now in the transition, and we won't know until he's president, and we won't know right. until 100 right. days in or 200 days in. Yep. Who is he really? Right. A lot of Republicans are having this question on the policy issues we'll get to in a few minutes. Trump's initial reaction was to support Obama when he had the opening in Cuba. But tr Donald Trump, the hotel, the builder, the businessman, his right. initial reaction was to support the reopening. Then as a presidential candidate, he came back. So we don't know where this one's going. And I think, you know, right. we, 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 we forget that this was a guy who sent emissaries to Cuba to explore the possibility of building a golf course. He has friends right in the travel, lodging, and construction industries. He is in the construction industry. They all want to play ball down in Cuba. To see him reverse course on this, when he knows that there are business opportunities down there, that would be a pretty stark it's reversal. Especially with flights right. opening. Yeah. Uh, They're already flying. Right. Mon a, Monday's the first commercial flight to Havana. He says, he, can he says, like this on many issues, I can negotiate a better deal. So maybe that's what his effort will be, to try to negotiate a better deal. And with Fidel gone, maybe Raul's different. Who knows? This is, we, we, this is a we don't, giant yeah. question mark here. Giant question mark. So let's, let's, on that issue, if Donald Trump is going to address this, he needs a Secretary of State. Um, who, 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 does. Does he, who does he pick? Yeah, yeah. Uh, who, 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 who does he pick? <laughs> That's With another that tweet from Oz. Right. Uh, <laughs> but but, so, but if you have this remarkable, you know, he meets with Mitt Romney, uh, and we all know the history. And, you know, he calls Mitt Romney a loser and a choker for losing in 2012. Uh, Mitt Romney was a huge part of the Never Trump yeah, movement. Right. Um, he said he could not support Donald Trump. He said it was, you know, essentially trickle-down racism, trickle-down misogyny, tr trickle-down sexism in the country. He couldn't support him. Yet they meet. Romney wants the job. Uh, our reporting from Jim Acosta at CNN is that they spoke at least once during the Thanksgiving break. We don't know the substance of the conversation. Uh, Mitt Romney, Rudy Giuliani's on the list. Uh, we're told Bob Corker, the senator from Tennessee, is on the list. Uh, General Kelly is on the list. Maybe General Petraeus, although I don't, know how, I don't know how you get him a security clearance to be Secretary of State. Uh, but Kelly and Conway, the president's campaign manager, 
uh, tweeting out essentially that she's getting all this blowback from the grassroots about how there's you know, all this support. Then she tweets out over the weekend, Kissinger and Schultz, as Secretary of State, flew around the world less, counseled POTUS close to home more, and were loyal. Good checklist. Uh, essentially, they're essentially trying to say you want you know, somebody loyal to Trump. Yeah, uh, yeah. Remarkable. Uh, what, uh, to public it's, campaign saying, hey, boss, don't do this. This, yeah. is, uh, this is another one of those defining questions, right? We know about Trump that we can't answer until he becomes president. Right. We know this is a guy who praises loyalty. Uh, Rudy Giuliani was loyal. He may not be able to be confirmed by Congress. Uh, <laughs> Trump has been turned off, reports say, by his right. public campaigning for the job. Mitt Romney was not loyal, as you point out. He was right. out there. Uh, he was, I believe he called Trump a phony. Uh, he, but, you know, Trump believes that he looks the part. Yeah, he seems which like is a secretary of state. But and yeah. frankly, that's a key he point. I th Trump loves stars. He, he, right. he loves he star he's power. Star. He, he's, he's assembling yep. a cast here. He, and he has TV yeah. experience. So yeah. which, which weighs out here? Do loyal, right. Does loyalty outweigh what like likely is the easier political choice, both at home and abroad? And, right. It's unclear. And the public campaigning by his closest aides is really remarkable. It, and it's also the larger fight within the Republican Party is playing out here, too. Right. It's the establishment versus the insurgents, the, the people who want to shake up Washington versus the people who are very comfortable in working within the behind the scenes in Washington. As you go a Mitt Romney route, which could reassure those establishment Republicans who are not sure about Donald Trump presidency, or does he go with yeah. someone who will shake up the system like a potentially a Rudy Giuliani would uh, in, but, in a but different still, way? I mean, but, but they're essentially both establishment figures, right? I mean, Rudy Giuliani is a little bit more uh, brusque. He's certainly not as telegenic uh, as Mitt Romney is. Uh, but the interesting thing about this is this isn't re really a debate about experience or policy or approach right. to the job. It really right. is about. In Mitt Romney's case, he looks the part. He yeah. would represent uh, Trump well on television. But they uh, disagree on a lot of issues. They agree on their public position well, on Cuba, they agree. Yeah. Uh, but on Russia, right. you could not get further exactly. apart uh, than Mitt Romney and Donald Trump. I mean, look, eight years ago, we were sitting here, uh, you know, slack jawed that, that, that Obama would pick Clinton as, as his top diplomat. And maybe Trump sees some of that, that, that not only does he look right. the part, but there's some drama in this. And you can send a message to the world that I can. Yeah, sort of uh, team sort of rivals. Of, yeah, exactly. Well, not even team of rivals that we right. can forgive and forget. Yeah. But right. I, I really think that Giuliani would have trouble getting confirmed. Right. Because if you've spent the last, essentially, four years prosecuting Hillary Clinton and her husband and all the ways they made money and all the things they did, right. Rudy Giuliani is no better. Right. And, and for Republicans yeah. to confirm Rudy Giuliani after You're, he went because out of all the, the speeches world, in the speaking, international business consulting the law, right, Latin yeah, right. American governments and European governments yeah. and making money with all the people he's going to work with, would be that sort of And it reminds you of Trump's like, problem. I mean, I think it's worth mentioning Petraeus here. The Petraeus yeah. oh, that, news yeah. is just mm -hmm. unbelievable. I right. mean, he was out on the campaign trail talking about how Petraeus, how Hillary Clinton should have gotten the Petraeus treatment, how he, right. I mean, which is basically an admission that uh, that he, that Petraeus misused classified information, mishandled classified information, and now you're going to put him in one of the primo spots well, in Trump your loves, cabinet? We're also learning that Trump loves generals. Yeah.